sheet of paper, just two sentences on it. Two angels in the sky over Berlin. What do you think about it? I say, a wonderful idea, let's do it. But who will find the story? And he said, we all together. I think that a movie that has truly resonated with me and stuck in my subconscious is Wim Wenders' 1987 film, Wings of Desire. A German film, its melancholic late Cold War Berlin has always appeared to me as a striking image with it full of angels wandering in black and white. It presents a much less moralistic view of angels, with them seeming to the audience to have the same consciousness of a human. Fender saying in an essay published some years later, With angels, you can do anything. There were connections all over the place. You could go anywhere. You could cross the wall, pass through windows into people's houses, and anyone, a passerby, passengers in the underground, was suddenly a hero in a potential film. It was scary. There were too much freedom in the imagination, even more so because there was going to be several angels. Berlin is still governed by four powers, so I thought you might have four angels, British, American, French, and Russian, but that made it too schematic. Then for a time, the angels were XM and a kind of aviators club, like in Howard Hawks' Only Angels Have Wings. By and by, we boiled it to keep what mattered, what the angels see. The two angels that became of Vender's thought process are who we primarily see throughout the film. Our protagonist, Demel, and his companion, Cassiel, see things not like biblical halo-wearing creatures, but feel like humans beyond time. I better cast two good friends because these two angels had spent already an eternity together. Who, if I cried out, would hear me among the angelic orders, and even if one were to suddenly take it to its heart, I would vanish into its stronger existence, for beauty is nothing but the beginning of terror, that is still able to bear, and yet we revere it so, because it calmly disdains to destroy us. Every angel is terror. That is an extract from the beginning of Do We Know Elegies, a series of laments from poet Rainer Maria Kurilk. The extract suggests humans are far from an understanding, a full comprehension of angels, with angels too beautiful to fully understand, with our view never measuring up to theirs. Wings of Desire feels like the flip side of that, where it shows the angels' perspectives as human, rather than Rilke's. And it comes to the conclusion that angels' perspectives are less than humans. Berlin is a city trapped in the past, a no man's land of a silent war that is incapable of moving on from violence in its past, despite the Second World War ending over 40 years before the movie, its presence still remains. His force is, is creating atmosphere, creating room, space, for instance. And this is sometimes for, mo for a movie is, is more touching than telling a straightforward story. Our train stations stubbornly remain half destroyed and crumbling and in film, people still dress and recreate the past in dark Nazi uniforms. The angels, like the people, are obsessed with time, a place that time seemed to forget. Seine sowjetische Düsenjäger nahe der Spandauer Heerstraße in den Stößensee. Vor 50 Jahren war die Olympiade. Vor 200 Jahren überflog Nicolas François Blanchard die Stadt in einem Heißluftballon. Das haben die Flüchtlinge neulich auch getan. Und heute, in der Lienenthaler Chaussee ist einer gegangen, ist dann immer langsamer geworden und hat dann über die Schulter ins Leere geschaut. This shot seems to illustrate my point. An angel looking down from a crumbling church, the Castle Wilhelm Church, or Gedeschne Kirchner, a famous German landmark bombed in 1943 but never repaired. He looks down from a relic of the past and only children can see him. Only those who time still goes on for, where every day brings something new.
in the world the angels see life incomplete, whilst on some level they know all information, they don't know what it's like to feel, they can hear it, they can see it, not experience warmth or touch or cold or taste. Endlich ahnen, statt immer alles zu wissen. Ach und O oh und A ah und W sagen können, statt Ja und Amen. They don't save, but then they have been, it seems, forgotten by God. They haunt Berlin streets quietly observing it. This harkening to the movie's original German title, The Skies Over Berlin, which is where the angels can be free not held by the overbearingness of the city. The movie, despite this, is zealously humanist. It suggests the beauty of living and celebrates the mundane and is an anthem for everydayness. It explores the idea of being sonder, the realization that every random passerby is living a life as vivid and complex as your own. The somber experience of the angels is due to their defining as helpless voyeurists, seeing but never interfering, pure-hearted wandering documentarians, limited to merely observe. Our eyes, angel eyes, are the camera. And this conjures up a moral question to the angels. Their work is attention, not action, and so they wonder if there is their own culpability in merely observing. Berlin works so well as the movie setting because it is a city that matches the angels. They are always stuck in time, ever changing, and now so is the city. Here the angels seem more human, despite appearing to have wandered for millennia they never decided to interact. The angels we see become human. Demel does because he sees life through rose-tinted glasses. He sees the good and so longs to be with it. Cassell sees the worst in human nature. He more wary of the past, never thinks to stride away from what he has. He, like the other angels, is was tired of not being able to help always remains secretly scared of what helping implies. They, whilst trapped in their own abstract hell, are partially their own trappers. As whilst they live in hell, they know hell and take comfort in knowing what awaits them. I in that sense, the film does in some way return to a biblical lesson. Like the story of Adam and Eve, the angels, they are faced with betraying their maker and seeming purpose for an ability to live. But unlike Adam and Eve, humans, the angels did not take the leap and stayed doing as they were told, and so never truly lived. This is also where we return to the passage of Rainer Maria Wilk's work, as here we find some meaning for it. Angels are not better than humans, but an angel with a human existence is. As a human, their main weakness, their inability to commune, is stripped away, and they possess both feeling and presence, as well as a love for every second of the day. This, who Peter Falk inhabits, playing himself as an angel who has become a human long ago, and despite having done so, marvels at everything. That was my point when I would talk to these angels. Hey. Come back over here. There's a lot of, a lot of good things going on. Shown with a little notepad, his inner monologues show how he's used to it, expressing his interest in humanity and everything around him, living with a quiet, joyful contentness. What a dear face. Interesting. What a nostril. A dramatic nostril. These people are extras. Extra people. Extras are so patient. They just sit.
den Fernseher auch behalten, weil den Fall magst du oder kriegst eh keinen besten Grund. Und die aktuelle Kamera, die kann schon auch in Schwarz-Weiß sehen. Nein, nee, warte, da kriegst du dann mit der aktuellen Kamera. I would like to become a human being, to see blood, to, to touch, to, 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 to become mortal. And when Mel becomes human, one of the first questions he is asked is... How long? Minutes. Hours. Days. Weeks. Months. Time! His answer, whilst not clear, is his understanding and admittance that he is no longer trapped by time and is now allowed to continue with his newly found human freedom. He now moves and ages with time, unlike his angelic existence, where he never saw difference in himself, and even if the world isn't exactly as he imagined, he still marvels in the small everydayness. Really make one of them cross that line. Well, it had to be something very special somehow. And I don't know, at some point I came up with the idea that maybe it would help if the woman would fly. <laughs> it was as naive as that. And then I thought of a Tupes artist in a circus. Bender writes when talking about Marion, I wanted her work to be dangerous, so that she could charm Demel, who himself was never in danger of falling. By the end of the film, we see Demel join Marion on the rope in the sky, his arms flexing to pull his own weight, and knowing that whilst danger of falling is there, Demel knows he need not care, for he knows he is all the time in the world. Hi, this is Luke. If you like that video, please like and subscribe, and click the bell icon for notifications about new videos.